Happy Hello, this is Ken Ham, coming to you from the Creation Museum, the best new oxymoron since Jumbo Shrimp and Microsoft Works. I'm here today to tell you about the exciting, powerful, stunning, amazing, stupendous movie called His Genesis History. It's the best documentary I've seen since the Flintstones, and even more accurate than Pete's Dragon. The film is hosted by Del Tackett, former president of Focus on the Family, sticking their noses in your bedroom since 1977 and host of The Proof Project, a DVD series that asks humanity's most difficult questions and answers them with a lollipop and a pat on the head. I'm proud to say the idea for this movie came out of my debate, Bill Nye. Did you know I debated Bill Nye? I did, you know. I debated Bill Nye. Anyways, Dale's three-year-old daughter started asking questions that Dale couldn't understand. So he set out to find white men with PhDs who could grapple with science at a three-year-old level to help explain it to him on camera. On February 23rd, 2017, Is Genesis History had a one-night showing in hundreds of movie theatres across the United States, was top of the box office for that night, earning 10 bags of popcorn, more than that random Tuesday in the third week of the Lego Batman movie, a movie which promotes the atheist idea that humans evolved from bats through random plastic bricks, which is it, Darwinists? I know that some of the scientists using the film use some big words and sentences where they don't belong, so if the movie made no sense to you, or even worse, if it did make sense, then this follow-up is for you. Is Genesis History Science? Kind of a challenge I would have to anybody who watches the Is Genesis History movie. When one side presents their argument, it sounds compelling mm -hmm. until somebody comes and cross-examines them. On February 23rd, I put on my best collar and headed off to the Cinemark Hazlitt 12 Theater in Hazlitt, New Jersey to see Is Genesis History. Having never been there, I was half expecting the Cinemark Hazlitt 12 Theater to be a batch of folding chairs in some church basement, but it turned out to be a real theater, showing real movies. Who knew? I expected to have issues at the ticket booth, even though I had pre-purchased my ticket. The girl behind the register seemed to be trying to elaborate on their no dogs allowed policy. Thinking quickly, I indicated I was a service dog, so she had better not give me any crap, or the theater would have a world of bad press the next day. She countered by asking to whom, exactly, I was being of service. Me, I said. She shrugged her shoulders and handed me the ticket. Alright, technically she tucked it into my collar. First things first, I decided. Then, off to the theater that was to show is Genesis History. Did anyone see the Green Mile, by the way? Apparently, they had it carpeted. Yes, I'm likening this particular film to Old Sparky in the Green Mile. I was in my seat with my pen and notepad a good ten minutes before the scheduled start time of 7 p.m. As showtime approached, it seemed the film was destined to bomb as there were only seven of us in the theater. As often happens with hasty judgments, I was mistaken. As the last few minutes before seven ticked away, people filed in and every seat was filled. Many of the seats were occupied by children. Children! As luck would have it, the seat directly to my left was occupied by a woman who introduced herself, I have no idea why, as an AIG teacher. Teacher! Did you hear that? An AIG teacher! Seeing my pen and notepad, and seemingly ignorant of the fact that I was trying to pretend that she did not exist, she asked if I was a critic. I replied, woof. She said, God bless you, which thoroughly confused me, but she left me alone for the rest of the show. One last deep dive into the bag of popcorn, and I prepared myself for the feverish scribbling of notes that was to follow. This would be no easy task. Remember the whole no thumbs thing. As the lights dimmed, I thought to myself, Okay, let's get this shit over with. I first became aware of the As Genesis History movie when Eric Coven's Creation Today ministry began to plug it. It was hard to miss. In the weeks before it hit theaters, Eric was doing Facebook Live chats with almost everyone involved in the film, including the host, Del Tackett. Tell me what in the world made you get involved in a project like this? Is Genesis History? We chatted together. Uh, he had a, an idea of uh, being able to just bring the scientific evidence in the field uh, with the, the scientists who were doing that work. 
uh, to try to help people be reassured that there is scientific evidence uh, that supports a uh, historical reading of Genesis. And there you have it, right from Dell's mouth. The purpose of the movie is to reassure those who already believe. It is not to convince a skeptic or even prove anything to an existing believer. The movie is to be reassuring, comfortable, unchallenging, a warm blanket, a hug, and a cup of cocoa. And did it work? I took to stalking anyone on Twitter mentioning having seen the movie in theaters to ask them a basic question. What piece of evidence presented did you find most compelling? While most people ignored my question, perhaps because I'm a random stranger from the internet, some replied with vague fuzzy sentiments like all of it or God's glory or the scenery. If there's one common theme in all the reviews of the film, it's that science or not, everyone liked the scenery. Of the few that replied with a scientific claim that compelled them, most told me about claims not even made in the film. They were imagining a claim and giving the film the credit. So, I'd have to say, yeah. If the purpose of the film is to reassure existing believers, then this informal survey says mission accomplished. But we're here to look at the actual claims made, not the platitudes or warm fuzzies. Do they hold up? What is the evidence? What do other experts say? If you care about the truth, you owe it to yourself to examine in full, which is what we'll do here. Let's get started. The film opens with host Del Tackett meandering an unspecified rugged-looking country of mountains, lakes, meadows, and streams. Planting a seed for the audience, he says the area reminds him of the Grand Canyon and ponders how long it might have taken for the features around him to form. And then, Del throws out the movie's very first scientific claim and the first attempt to undermine the scientific method. A lot of these rocks have been dated to be 350,000 years old, up to 2 million that's pretty old. But it might surprise you to know all of the geological formations we see here, the canyons, the layers, even the plants, are younger than I am. Dun dun dun! We're just two minutes in and Dell has pulled his first switcheroo, the first devastating blow to naturalistic paradigm, and the imagined expectations of the audience. He's actually standing near the foot of Mount St. Helens, a volcano that erupted in 1980 a place where the most recent features are well documented as forming only 37 years ago. And yet, someone somehow dated these rocks to be at least 350,000 years old. How could you trust such a person, or the science they represent? Well, let's take a look at who this poor scientist was who, who obviously got the dates so very, very wrong. Hmm, it seems to be one Steve Austin. No, not that Steve Austin. No, not that Steve Austin. Steve A. Austin, from the Institute for Creation Research, and coincidentally, the very first PhD who will be trotted out by the movie. It seems that in the late 80s, Dr. Steve Austin and his associates gathered up some samples from Mount St. Helens, did his own undocumented sorting of the materials, then submitted them for potassium-40 argon dating. The lab returned results with drastically wrong dates of 350,000 years and older. Austin has been promoting this finding for decades to attempt to undermine the accuracy of radiometric dating. As a refresher, radiometric dating utilizes the features of radioactive material that it decays at a very constant, precisely measurable rate. This is the principle upon which we use atomic clocks, for example. Since we know the half-life, the amount of time needed for half the sample to decay, we can measure the ratio of parent material to daughter material and can calculate a time. The trouble is, with potassium-40's half-life of over 1.2 million years, Austin basically attempted to measure the distance between a sandwich and a pickle on his plate using a satellite in space, then laughing when the result came back within two meters. It's the wrong tool for the wrong job. There are very few labs in the world that have the kind of expensive precision equipment to accurately measure argon-40 quantities as small as a few thousand years, let alone a few dozen years. One such laboratory is not Geochron Laboratories of Cambridge, Massachusetts, where Austin sent his samples. In fact, the lab no longer even performs potassium-40 dating. But... If we go back to the earliest times of the Internet Wayback Machine, when they did process such samples, we can see that the lab clearly states, we cannot analyze samples expected to be less than 2 million years old. Dell hired someone who warned him in advance that they didn't have the right tools for the job, then got excited when they didn't have the right tools for the job. After spraying this gotcha on the audience, Dell says, Isn't it amazing what a little bit of information from the past can do to help Change your view of the present and the world around you? That is amazing. Here's a bit more information. The obvious dating incompetence presented was purported by the so-called expert we're going to see on screen. 
either the producers didn't know this when they should have, or they knew about it and decided to misrepresent the findings on purpose. Does that little bit of information help the audience change their view about what they're about to see? I'm not even going to go into the other obvious fallacies involved in comparing Mount St. Helens to the Grand Canyon, including the materials of soft ash versus solid limestone, the slope and grade of the walls, the factor of a 100,000 times difference in size, etc. We're only one claim in, and we already have one very dishonest misrepresentation of a fact. Where will the movie go from here? Subscribe to our channels, or merely follow the link playlist to proceed to part one of his Genesis History Science. See you there.